Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the second part of our look at the individual differences explanation of schizophrenia that we're covering, which is the psychodynamic approach. Um, you would probably be expecting me to ask, ask you some questions from the last lesson. So you might want to just pause for a moment and ask yourself, am I really clear what we mean by fixation? And what that's got to do with uh, schizophrenia? What has regression got to do with schizophrenia? Um, and what exactly is a schizophrenogenic mother? Okay, so those would be three questions that you would want to be fairly confident with before we crack on. Okay, so lesson focus today is we, we're going to evaluate the psychodynamic explanation of schizophrenia. Um, and we're going to do it using the following sort of ideas. So first of all, that Freudian theories are out of date. You know, Freud's it's over, well over 100 years ago since Freud was... Um, sharing his ideas. So are those theories a bit out of date? Um, there isn't an effective treatment. There isn't an effective psychoanalysis or a psychoanalytic treatment for um, schizophrenia. So maybe that suggests um, it's not a good explanation. Um, there's quite a lot of argument over schizophrenogenic mothers, whether there are such things, uh, whether it's a useful thing to talk about anyway. Um, and also Freud's been criticised for overlooking the role of genetics, which may or may not be fair given that genetics wasn't very developed when uh, he was writing. Again, you need to use that, you need to use all of this information, oh for Pete's sake, you need to use all of this information um, and be able to apply it in a novel scenario which you might get in the exam. Okay, so you might, again you might want to pause for a moment and just ask yourself, looking back on um, Looking back on Freud's um, and from Reitman's explanation of schizophrenia, what are the strengths and weaknesses of what they put forward? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run through uh, some ideas um, in the order that I've, that I've put above. Um, and remember that what you need to do is that you need to be making notes in the handout and be ready to pr produce a summary sheet so that you could write an essay on this material if you needed to do to do so. Okay, so one of the things I love about Freud is that he's, he's a great storyteller and um, and it sounds, and it's quite a powerful explanation. When you look at people um, who are suffering from schizophrenia, it's quite a quite a good image, a useful, a useful image maybe in some ways, is it? To, to suggest that that person has regressed back to the, um, the oral stage when the only bit of the personality that exists is the uh, is the id, um, so and and at that stage, infants were a kind of got sort of crazy fantasy lives, and they're only interested in themselves, um, and they don't really understand much about the world. So that that's a fairly interesting idea, isn't it? That that a schizophrenic in some ways is 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 understands as little about the world, if you like, as someone who's only just born. So it's. Um, and it can explain, so it can explain symptoms like delusions of grandeur, where people think that they're, um, you know, Jesus or Hitler or whatever. Um, however, we know how complicated schizophrenia is as a mental illness with a, a, vast, um, a really large number of different symptoms. Um, and though schizophrenia can, though the psychodynamic approach can explain quite a lot of symptoms of schizophrenia, it can't explain them all. Um, so it's not, a com apart from anything else, a conclusion we draw from that is that it's not a complete explanation. Yeah, so that's something to hold on to, this idea that it's not maybe a very complete explanation. Um, also, this idea, although it's a, an interesting picture of saying that a schizophrenic has gone back to, um, to the sort of oral stage, they don't act like, their behaviour doesn't, doesn't resemble that of infants. So it's not, although it's an interesting and, and a good story in some ways. It's not um, incredibly accurate. Okay. Right. So if we um, if we look back to our um, biological explanation, which said that uh, positive symptoms of, psycho of schizophrenia are caused by um, too much dopamine, that's an interesting theory. And you know there was some some evidence to back it up. Um, it then produced. We then produced antipsychotic drugs out of that, yeah. So, um, and then antipsychotic drugs are designed to reduce 
the amount of, of uh, dopamine in, in a person with schizophrenia is brain um, and reduce their symptoms. And because that they work, that suggests that the theory is good, doesn't it? It suggests that um, if, if that's the reason people are, are showing schizophrenic symptoms, if we change the amount of dopamine, we get rid of the symptoms. That seems like a good, makes it sound like a good theory. Psychoanal psychoanalysis, which is the psychodynamic theory, um, doesn't really work on people with schizophrenia. So maybe then the argument is that the, um, the, the theory, the psychodynamic theory, isn't a, isn't a valid one for schizophrenia. Um, we talked about this when we evaluated the psychodynamic approach last year. Their psychodynamic theories are unscientific and they're untestable. And we think about things like the id, the ego, the superego, the unconscious. There's not an awful lot of scientific evidence that we can look at to support those. Also, in terms of thinking about a, a scientific approach, um, Freud ne never really spent very little time with actual schizophrenics, never met the guy um, who wrote the book about schizophrenia that he read. So you can figure out for yourself what that, why that's a big problem. Um, Another, another problem, part of the theory, is that Freud suggests that people are fixated at the oral stage, which happens when you're very young, right? So if, if people are fixated at the oral stage when they're very young, why does it take so long for people to develop schizophrenia? Because as we know, schizophrenia tends to develop between, um, in adolescence, so between people between 16 and 25, something like that. So why, do, why does it, why is there that big gap before schizophrenia appears? Um, Freud, Freud doesn't really talk about genes or uh, things being inherited, but then again, the the study of genetics wasn't for it wasn't anywhere near as well developed it isn't, as it is now. So you know, although that might be true to say that, it might not be particularly fair when we're talking about Freud's view on it. Okay, so this bit is not is um, more to do with um, one a, a, a woman who actually. Um, uh, how would you put it? A woman who, who um, was a follower of Freud and then she slightly she changed her views a little bit. So she held on to a lot of psychodynamic ideas, but she changed some. Uh, and her name was Frieda from Reichmann. Um, and she, she suggested that, that it was the, as we saw in, in the previous video, obviously, that um, the, the, the mother, the behavior of the mother was responsible for for someone developing schizophrenia. Okay. Now, looking at that from an evidence point of view, there is some evidence that poor family relationships as a whole have an effect on schizophrenia. We'll see that when we look at social psychological explanations next in the in the next uh, explanation we'll look at. Um, but the idea that it might be um, the mother, there's not an awful lot of evidence saying that the mother has a special role, and the evidence that does suggest something different about the mother doesn't really fit in with from Reichmann's theory anyway so if you think about someone like um Waring and Ricks they found that the mothers of schizophrenics tended to be anxious shy withdrawn and going that doesn't really fit in completely does it with um the overprotective um cold distant mother that, that from Reichmann talks about um wild it out oops sorry Wild et al, they found it was the fathers of schizophrenia rather than the mothers who play a more dominant role in the family. So, um, so again, there, there doesn't appear to be a whole lot of evidence to support the, 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 the theory of the schizophrenogenic mother. Another way of looking at it is that um, the, the relationship between the mother and the child works both ways. So, as a, so it could be that the mother's personality leads to schizophrenia in the child could work that way or it could be that the schizophrenic behavior of the child causes the, the mother to behave in a different way um it might be that um because, because of their difficult because of the difficult strange things that people with schizophrenia can do it makes it difficult for the mother to bond with them so there's a whole issue of cause and effect so that's um that's one problem it could be that the uh, people the the child develops schizophrenia because the mother has passed on a genetic vulnerability that they have. If you Google 
uh, the Janine quadruplex, you'll get a bit more information on that. Okay, so this the theory could explain why schizophrenia runs in families, that's a positive point of it, but the theory is incomplete. Why is it incomplete? Because how do we explain people, schizophrenics, people with schizophrenia who have got warm mothers? How do we explain people who have cold mothers but don't develop schizophrenia? How do we explain people who haven't uh, grown up with the mother? How do we explain that them getting the schizophrenia? So those are those are things, those are problems with the theory. And then this one here places blame on the mother. That's actually saying, how helpful is it to, to suggest that the mother's responsible? It's like blaming the mother, um, causing shame and guilt. And it's actually quite sexist, especially when we see, let me just go back, especially when we see that the, the fathers, um, as we saw in the, the wild research, um, the fathers are also, um, you know, have also got a dominant role to play. Okay, so that's, that's we've run through the, the four sections that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, make sure you you write up, you finish off your the, the handbook, finish up, up, fill all the gaps in there. Make sure you complete your summary sheet, and I look forward to seeing you hopefully quite soon. Have a good day. Bye.